Oh, great. Thanks. Thanks so much. Um, I'm coming from Gadigal country too, and I pay my respects to the elders past, present and future. Um, yeah, I've, I've, I'm just focusing on the artworks that I've made that directly uh, address issues of water. And as we all know, if we don't have water, there's no life. Next, please. This is the Murray River at Robin Vale, where I was brought up on a soldier settlement property. Uh, we used to go down the river in the summer to cool off mainly, having picnics down there and swimming in the water and, you know, the temperatures would be up in the 40s. You can see there, there's a scar on the tree in the foreground. It's probably a Kuhlman, I'd say. There was very much uh, a, an, an awareness of the presence of the Aboriginal people, the Lachi Lachi people. Um, they lived on the river under the wire of the Aboriginal um, protection people and traveling down to the river, we passed scar trees, which were amazing. Next, please. My childhood was very creative. And uh, back then the uh, parenting method was benign neglect. <laughs> Our parents were too busy to um, be helicopter parents. His um, friends and I off uh, riding out into the bush to Lake Benini. Next, please. The first project that I did um, relating to water to the Murray River was after I came back to Australia being overseas for five years and I became aware that the Murray River was beginning to be in a sorry state with uh, salination um, and a lot of uh, the effects of um, deforestation, um, irrigation and uh, pollution. These are five places that I went to uh, document as indications, taking people to the river, showing them what the river is actually like and um, showing them the geological changes along the river. Next, next please. I, I uh, took the approach of a cartographer pretending that I was flying over the um, river bank where the water meets the, the land um, with my camera framed um, through the viewfinder onto grids. The one on the left is near Corriong where the river is a fast flowing mountain stream. The central, central one is in the Barma forest where the river uh, it has begun its long, slow, wandering, meandering journey across the very uh, flat landscape to South Australia. And on the right, there's a, a typical sandbar uh, where the river deposits sand and uh, it's a wonderful e ecological um, phenomenon in itself. Next, please. And on the left again, uh, the river has um, uh, made its way through limestone um, to, the, to the estuary. And the estuary is via Lake Alexandrina and the Coorong into the sea in South Australia. Next, please. Now, in 2007, the millennium drought was uh, just an absolute disaster for the, for the river and the um, riparian environment. So my daughter and I went up into the um, mountains in Victoria to wit witness the um, start of the Murray River, which is a little spring, the headwaters. In the centre, we 
uh, went to Corrie, the uh, mountain stream near Corriong again, and weeds had grown into the rocks because the river was so low. And on the right, you can see the mucky uh, debris and the, the clay in the, the riverbed just sort of um, so, uh, soaking, uh, you know, yeah, uh, because the river was so low. Very upsetting to see all this, by the way. Mm -hmm. I was um, very attached to the river. Um, next, please. Yeah, uh, Lake Boga gets its water from the Murray and it was completely dried up. People had um, uh, had fun uh, hitting golf balls in, <laughs> into the lake. Don't ask me. And uh, so hundred, hundreds and hundreds of golf balls were cleaned up in the, in the dried up lake. It was completely dried up. There was no water in it whatsoever. Uh, and at the sandbar, at the um, junction of the Murray and the Murrumbidgee rivers, the water would um, go down so far that the, uh, the relationship between the clay um, riverbed and the sand was revealed. And again, weeds were growing in the riverbed. Next, please. This is another lake dependent on the um, Murray, Lake Benini in New South Wales. And as you can see, not a drop of water. Quite ironic that there was a, a little um, uh, water um, measurement thing in the middle of it all. Next, please. And this is uh, on the left, um, Bottle Bend, which was totally polluted by acid sulfate. The river looked like urine. And because the water was so low, it uh, revealed how salt uh, encrusted the, um, the snags and so on in the river. And at Muldura, blue-green algae which is the cause of the fish kill in uh, Menindi recently, but we'll get to that later. Next, please. And um, in uh, South Australia, near Swan Reach, it, the, the Lowered River revealed this amazing um, rock formations. And on the right, Again, back to the estuary at Lake Alexandrina. Next, please. And then came the rain. So I jumped in the car and went to, went to document the um, floods. And this was one of the more extraordinary photographs that I, I took. You can see a whole year's um, supply of hay was completely subsumed by the water. Next, please. Um, so the mapping has been a, a tool that I've used quite often. This, this is a, an etching. Um, the top image is uh, the, one of the early satellite photographs of the Murray in flood. And then below that on the left is a map used by the um, uh, steamboat captains to uh, indicate how deep the water was as they um, navigated the river and also indicated where the, where the timber was to um, deforestate the river environment to um, power their boats. Uh, right of that, and you can see uh, a detail it, detail it on, the, on the left is a um, beer can with bullet holes that I found on the um, river bank indicating the culture. And below that, uh, the, the 
sandbar on one side of the river down, down on the bottom and uh, above that on the right, what it looked like on the other side of the river. Next, please. I also used the photographs uh, you know, of the grids along the river for other works, including a series that use the river as a metaphor for our lives. And uh, you can see a baby being born out of the cracks in the clay. Um, the photographs I took in, in Barma Forest. Next, please. This is a work um, placing the lakes that are dependent on the river into the context of a world map. Um, the, I love that these, these um, maps of the lakes are, are, are like um, fetuses and um, uterus. And uh, I've also indicated land, the way, way we've divided up the land ownership around the lake and the whole um, drawing or work on paper has uh, images of dead trees scattered over the whole image. And the piece on the floor is, you can't see it from this angle, but it sort of wends its way across the floor. And it's a whole um, lot of images of women's bodies representing the generations after generations of generations of people who've lived along the Murray, the indigenous people. And on the floor on the right there, there's a book that uh, the people could flick through to see the photographs I took of the dead trees in um, the lake, dry lake it's called, but it's not dry anymore. It's, it's flooded to provide water for irrigation. And so all of the trees that used to be in it uh, have died. So it's like a tree cemetery. Next, please. This is uh, Murray River Punch. Uh, I, I took on the persona of a um, cooking demonstrator, which, which was a very new thing back then. I saw one in the Myers department store. Anyway, here I am measuring pea to put into the mix. All of the ingredients were the pollutions that were going into the river. Yum. Next, please. And in 2010, um, in response to the millennium drought, I made a dip that you could work, eat with crackers because there wasn't enough water in the, in the Murray to um, make a drink. Next, oh, I'm putting the um, acid sulfate that I collected in, in it. This is controlled atmosphere. Um, I, I photographed, sorry, printed, the photocopied the image of Lake Pedda, which had already been flooded and just destroyed um, in response to the threat that uh, the Franklin River was going to be go down the same track, but fortunately the um, decision was made to not not flood it. But uh, after photocopying the photocopies, photocopying the photocopies, uh, like a very dutiful bureaucrat, I completely uh, obliterated the original image of Lake Pedder. Next, please. This is some um, work I did for Documenta addressing uh, the plastics pollution of the, the trans equality, uh, ecology of water. Water 
goes everywhere. You, you can't stop it, you know. And my, my uh, concept was that in the future, genetically engineered creatures would clean up our hideous mess for us. And all of the creatures are here uh, on a, in a um, natural history museum display that people could wander around and read the um, uh, taxonomies of all the creatures. And on the walls, there was uh, photographs of what nature was like back in 1906, uh, taken in Athens, Castle and um, Sydney. And on the right-hand side, the photographs uh, represent nine, uh, 2017 when uh, the, the um, installation was first shown in Athens um, of the, the emergency of the plastics pollution that had to be cleaned up. And uh, so you can see all, you know, next please. Uh, there was also a um, touch screen where people could find out more about plastic pollution and also all of the taxonomies of the creatures were in the, on the, the um, touch screen. And the taxonomies were actually based on actual taxonomies of the creatures that I'd um, represented using plastic uh, vacuum cleaners off the streets of Sydney, um, the way they move around is using um, uh, the, um, the way that vacuum cleaners suck in air and expel air. The Hoover manoeuvre, that's what I called it, the Hoover manoeuvre. Next, please. Yeah, there's, uh, the, they all, you know, talk to each other and yeah, hung out, you know. Next, please. This is uh, one of the um, creatures. Uh, it's um, a Trump pussy. Yeah. <laughs> Next, please. And this is ocelot. Um, you can see how ocelot would be very good at um, sucking up all the plastic. And the last uh, sentence in the taxonomy uh, tells us that there are only 50 land-based ocelots in the uh, uh, ocelots in the wild when uh, the creature was. Um, engineered to suck up plastic. Next, please. As you can see, I often use humor in my work um, uh, to draw people in and, yeah, yeah, draw people in really. I mean, the, the um, performances of Murray River Punch but everyone was laughing in, in horror. <laughs> anyway, this uh, next artwork is not funny. This is the fish, um, the fish traps, the Noongar fish traps in Bawarana that are um, approximately 40,000 years old and are reputed to be the oldest man-made uh, structures in the world. Um, I've, I've been fascinated by Brewarana for years and the Darling River, actually. I must do a project on specifically on the Darling River in the future. Next, please. Downstream from the fish traps, there's a, a place where ochre was collected for ceremony because the reason, possibly the reason why the fish traps were created is because up to 20 nations gathered there for ceremony and meetings. And uh, so there was a, a big mob to feed at this, these times. Next, please. 
So this is the one that's not so funny. This is, I was driving to Menindi to check out this crazy fish kill. And I'm thinking, what am I doing? What, what, what do I want to do there, you know? And I was thinking, I want to put us in that fish kill. And the image of Millet's uh, Ophelia suiciding in, in, the, in the river came to my mind. And so I'm thinking, who can photograph me doing this? It's got to be a, photo, a, a performance for camera. And the woman in the um, uh, motel room next door to me had this enormous <laughs> camera, professional camera, Melissa Williams Brown. And I told her about my idea. She said, "Yes, we have to do it." So we got up really early in the morning, and uh, so that we wouldn't be disturbed, and um, took this uh, photograph. Yeah, and me in amongst the maggots. The stench, it was just disgusting. You can, you might be able to see a fly on my face there. Anyway, uh, it's just a very, very vivid reminder of what can happen. I'd like to thank all the presenters actually uh, for talking about how art works, you know, as a communication. I've always seen art, my artwork as a communication. Thanks very much. <laughs>